uh, from gettingagrip.com. Um, Robin's actually a, a seasoned veteran, not only of um, time management and, and uh, productivity tips and tools. Uh, she's also a seasoned veteran of using the uh, the go to uh, webinar product. Um, so she, in fact, is probably better qualified than I to be driving this presentation, which is um, some some um, of use to me. But Robin's been around for a while. She runs gettingagrip.com. Uh, she's written five books on the subject of personal productivity and, and time management. And she travels the world presenting seminars and, and training on the topic, um, either in public forums or, or directly within organisations. Um, so Robin's had her own uh, process as a real estate agent of uh, having problems with her own time management and, and through burnout and poor time management decided to do something about it. Um, and set herself on a new career path and setting up uh, gettingagrip.com. Hi, Robin. Hi there, Hayden. How's it going? Very well, very well. Just uh, the usual getting things organised and watching people slowly filter in the door. Well, I think given that we're talking about time management, we should probably get started. What do you reckon? Anyone that comes late's late. What do you think? I think that's a fair assessment. You have to look at the today's presentation topic and uh, conclude that that's, that's reasonable. Let's quickly just run through how the questions are raised. I see people coming in um, raising a few questions, so there's a few out there that know how to do it, but on the screen in front of you is um, you should see a questions pane on the little sidebar that um, is, is on your screen. If you want to um, raise a question, just type where that arrow is pointing, um, that, that comes in and is visible to the organisers. I've got a, a, a guy um, helping out here, James New from, from Citrix is, is around and I've got a, uh, my editor, Jonathan Cotton, is, is helping out too. So anything that you want to ask, just, just fire away and we, we should get back to you, either you directly or um, if it's a question for the whole audience, we'll put it in a queue to, to handle. Um, and yes, there is a free subway um, out of your attendance today. That there is a limit of a, a hundred. Um, so on the basis of the people who registered first and who also are attended today, um, you will get a subway subway card mailed out to you. Um, please make sure if you're not certain when you registered. Um, that you had the correct address in, address in there. Um, there's an opportunity with the exit interview to, to make sure that you've got uh, the address correctly. Um, so hang around until the end there. So without further ado, um, we'll pass over to Robin. Uh, now I'll just hand um, the presentation across to Robin and she will run it for her. So just excuse if there's a bit of a blip and a, and a jip. Uh, Robin will pick up from where I leave off. Over to you, Robin. Well, thanks very much, Hayden. And we're just, um, just as a, as a presenter of you, is just changing. Um, let me just very quickly get. I'm uh, just okay, guys. Um, we oops, no, went the wrong one first. Two seconds. Okay, there we go. I think you now you can see my screen. How's that? Can you see that, Hayden? Can you see my screen? No, wrong one. That looks good, Robin. There we are. Good. Thank you. Well, hi, folks. Really great to be with you today. And thank you to Hayden and thank you to Citrix for making it possible. Uh, I just love doing this webinar environment because you can reach so many people and help them in so many ways. So good on you for your initiative, guys. I'm very impressed. And welcome, everybody, to, to you folk for being here today. I, it's a, quite a, a privilege and a treat to be here. Now, I'm not face-to-face -face with you to see your responses, but here's a question for you, and you might like to um, uh, type this even into the, the chat box, but who's got more, or question box, is have you got enough time in your day? Oh, no, yes or a no on that one. Um, would you like less stress? Would you perhaps like le um, a little bit less mind clutter? What's going on in your world? The... The thing that I find with people constantly today is that most folk are just really struggling with too many conflicting tasks. Or often it's the look of your office that might be driving you nuts. 
I invite you to just look around your office and, have, and think to yourself, how would I feel if my top client walked in right now? And then some of you might be finding that you're just working crazy hours and you want to know how to get home earlier. So I'll be sharing some practical tips on all of those things today for you. Now, one thing that you might like to do is, uh, in that um, question box, is just type in, because it's a good chance for you to practice some of the fabulous features that GoToWebinar has, just type in what is your biggest challenge with time. I'll just give you a moment to do that. If, uh, do you see where you can type that in? There's a uh, question box there. Just what is it that's your biggest challenge? Just take a moment to get that written in there now. And we'll just watch and see what comes through. Balancing work and family, and Kerry's saying conflicting priorities. Doing the right thing, there's delegation from Andy, um, more delegation. Doing the important things from Victor, not the easy ones. Email management, finishing tasks. Um, oh, quite a lot on email. More on email, 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 email. <laughs> Filing and keeping track of paper. Finishing one task at a time. Guys, this is great. Keep on throwing them in because we'll pick up on those later on and maybe I'll end up sending information to some of you if there's any really unique ones that we don't cover on today. What I'd like to just first of all share with you just for a brief moment is how I get to be the one talking to you about time management today, if that's okay with you. There are many facets of my story that would bring me to that, but let me just share one particular story. Some years ago, I was I had not long been living in Auckland. It was back in the very late 1980s, and I was selling real estate. To be perfectly frank with you, I was struggling with my time. I was visiting a friend on the North Shore one lovely sunny Sunday morning, and honestly, I was having a pity party, moaning and complaining because I just didn't seem to have enough hours in the day. Real estate was great for me in terms of income, but what was happening was that I was quite frequently doing burnout because I just didn't seem to have a good handle on the whole thing. Well, my friend Tony listened for a little while and then in some frustration he said to me, oh, for goodness sakes, Robin, go and get a decent diary. And that, guys, was the beginning of the journey that led me into becoming what is now 18 years later. Well, in fact, that was 20 years ago because it took me two years to get myself sorted out. And then two years later, to my utter surprise, people started asking for help and that's now become a, a business that I, I have coverage right around the world on so many things in relation to time. So it's been a wonderful journey. Now some of the things that I just want to cover off with you today, um, when the screen changes, why are we not seeing the screen change, Hayden? That's interesting. Oh, there it is. Sorry, there's a little yeah, bit of a lag. Yep, That's yep, great. That Excellent. So today's agenda, what we're going to cover is just a few minutes to give you a structure or a framework, if you like, to review your own time status. And this will help you see where your gaps are. We'll touch on some key concepts on planning and prioritizing, especially the little used power strategy that really effective people apply with their diaries. I want to look at three quick email shortcuts to give you time back. And guys, there are so many more um, tips that we could cover on email. It's, we're not going to be able to do a whole session on that today, of course. Um, and, I, and I cover them in some of my other programs. We'll talk about just a few quick clutter-busting angles for you and how to de-stress your workspace because I see that a number of you have raised that one. And at the finish, there will be a few spots for Q&A, so be thinking about your questions as we go. Uh, and if you don't have time to get them all answered today, please feel free to email me at robin at gettingagrip.com. Also, I've got a couple of really fantastic things for you that I'll share with you just towards the end. Now, just before we get started and I take you to the next screen, I just want you to uh, get one really useful distinction about time. It's not, in fact, time that we're talking about, really, people. It's about energy. And here's the question you might like to think for yourself. What blocks your energy? What slows you down? Uh, because you will find that often that is the issue that is uh, affecting you. Now. We'll, we'll now have a look at the what I call my toolbar of time. It's 
uh, you could use it in many different ways. And what I often say to people is think about it as a diagnostic tool or a training tool, not just for yourself, but also for the people in your organization. Um, I share this diagram in just about every session that I run these days, something I developed thir about 13 years ago. And the, of course, in my boot camps and the training sessions and, and our Crack the Time Code Academy, we drill down much more. But I'll just give you a very quick framework on it today. So there's the big picture. If we're clear about what ha matters to us, if we've got good, clear goals, if we know what is important in our lives, then we're in a better position to to be able to push back on the things that are time stealers. So that's the first element. It gives us the focus and clarity and the ability to do pushback. The second area is the planning and prioritizing. There's four areas to that, but today we're just going to look at one of those things, and that's how to use the diary. The, tr the tips and tricks, that's the efficiency side of things, efficiency being the outcome, of course. And here's the thing to be thinking about there, it's to become a walking question mark is the way I like to describe it. What is it that uh, will help you be more effective, efficient in the just about everything that you do. So there'll be email, there's um, the office, there's delegation, those things that you guys raised with the questions. It's effective meetings. Um, it's uh, just about everything else apart from planning and prioritizing in actual fact. So, and of course I've got masses of um, books and training seminars and things on all of those. We'll look at just one or two things today on that one. Um, a couple of examples actually, let me just give you a couple because we won't get back to doing much on that given the time constraints that we have. But here's one, uh, I was doing a road show for the National Bank a few years ago and covered 35 events right around the country. One of the ladies on a course, on one of the sessions, when I asked what would be an example of something that was a time saver in that tips and tricks section, said a getting a crock pot. So that's a really domestic home one, but of course if you think about what a crock pot will do, it enables you to do the slow cooking, you've got the meal set up before you leave the house in the morning, it's a time saver, so that's a family one. On a business context, a couple of quick ones, and these ones are from one of my books about time, 120 tips for those with no time. One is get ready first at the beginning of the day for all of the things that you've got to do for the day. If you do that, if you've got the if you've done all the preparation for the day early, then you can stop what you're doing through the course of the day and just go easily and smoothly off to attend to the next item without that mad frantic stress of, um, oh my gosh, I've got to go out the door and I haven't quite got the meeting notes ready, that sort of thing. And one other quick one that came from a session years and years ago from one of my participants, and this will be relevant for the, those of you who tend to run late constantly, is don't do that one last thing. Because if you are, have the tendency to go off and do a, a one last thing, you will always find that that one last thing is going to be the thing that will make you late. So th those are just some examples and tips and tricks. And then the fourth quadrant, a fourth um, sector rather, is what I call sanity gaps, which is really about the whole work-life balance, making sure that we get time for ourselves. So feel free to use that diagram, folks. It's something that I designed some years ago, but I'm really happy for you to just use that any way you like. And you will find that um, there, if there's time problems, typically one or other of those things is the thing, is, there'll be something that's not working in that area. Now let me just give you one particular element with the, um, the, the planning and prioritizing section because I see quite a few questions have come in on that regard. The wrong way to do, it's not so much perhaps the wrong way to use a diary, but an enhanced way to use a diary, a better way to use a diary is using it on a weekly basis. Now, a number of you will be doing diary, using your diary to plan, thing, to, to block in your appointments. That's what most people, in fact, most people do block, use their diaries as appointment takers. It's not that that's wrong, but it can be enhanced if we also use it as a planning tool. So we are blocking in things that we wish to do that are going to have a long-term value, not just uh, the appointments that we've got. So there's a, there's a lot more that could be said about that one. 
uh, my book Getting a Grip on Time talks about that in much more depth and also there is a free report for you on my website which is gettingagrip.com. Um, if you go to that website you'll f afterwards <laughs> you'll find that there's a free report there that you can get called How to Master Time in Only 90 Seconds and there's a whole bunch of other really useful things like video clips that have been done for TV and free special reports that you'll get. So that will expand on all of that much more extensively for you. Uh, one other quick thing on that one is the the daily list. Now I'm working at the moment doing some coaching with a, a gentleman who's uh, very senior in the uh, mortgage broking business and lovely guy, lots of things going on in his life and he was constantly feeling fragmented. So what he has now started to do and has had huge value from it is still keeping a a uh, list of the things, the, the long list of things that he wants to attend to, but not having them as the major focus. I, th I just um, get you to think about your own lists. If you've got a very large list, do you ever find it overwhelming? You've got too much going on? Uh, what this guy is now doing is he's identifying just a few key things that are going to really make a long-term difference and he's got them on the daily list that he's focusing on and he finds it's just improved his focus and dramatically improved his productivity. So they are the ones he's looking at constantly. The other things are the, the um, they're on a safety net list if you like and another key point on that folks is getting things written down. It's when we're trying to remember everything that it gets too hard. Now before I get to giving you just three quick simple strategies of so many on email, uh, let me just go back to Hayden and see, if, um, Hayden are there any specific questions, I know there's quite a few there, but are there any particular questions that um, would be pertinent to answer in regards to, to the planning, that we've perhaps got time for one or two questions? Look, one that uh, grabbed me, I think, um, and that a lot of people are struggling with is the balance between, um, from, from Fiona asking this, uh, the balancing the, the work and life priorities, particularly in part-time roles where I guess it's juggling and, and you, you might be picking up the kids after school, but uh, the, the work phone calls are still coming in. Just maybe some tips in dealing with that, Robin? Okay, right, I'll see what we can fit in there quite quickly. And Fiona, I do understand that. I have um, six children of my own and 15 grandchildren. The kids are all grown up and left home, I'm pleased to tell you. <laughs> but the grandchildren come and go a lot. So um, yes, I understand. Like this afternoon, I've got to go and pick up my 14-year-old, who's the oldest one, to come and mow my lawns, for example. And then on the weekend, I'll be doing things with small babies and stuff like that. So I understand this one. And I've done the solo mother thing as well. And run a real estate business whilst I was a single mum and so on. So uh, the, the quickest way to answer that would be, again, coming back to the weekly planning, I advise you to do your planning, if possible, before the week starts, ideally on the Friday prior or perhaps at the weekend. But if you can do it beforehand, before the week starts, then you have some sense of clarity of what's going on and get all of the family commitments blocked in and this applies not just to Fiona but to all of you, get your family commitments and your personal things blocked in, possibly even first, but definitely um, into the schedule before you start arranging the other things. When, when I was in real estate, I quite quickly learnt that I had to get my children to put themselves into the diary, so that made sure that I had time for those things. Uh, there is lots more that I could say to that one, Fiona, but hopefully that might, might just get you started. Shall we go on, Hayden, to looking at some email uh, tips because I do realise we're going to run out of, I, I hate to say this, but we'll run out of time if we don't keep going. Is that okay with you, Hayden? Yeah, yeah, look, I think press on. Okay. Uh, now, there are just three things that I'm going to share with you today and I'll just take a moment to go into my own email system to just show you how to do these ones because they are three of many really good time saving things. One is to turn off the alert, the second one is to drag um, emails straight into calendar and or into tasks. You can also do it into contacts but those two I'll just show you quickly. And signatures, um, if I can quickly show you signatures we'll see how we go there. I'm just going to go out of this screen and get into my Outlook uh, system. Okay, now what we've got here, I think it's changing, 
it's a bit slow to change. There we go. Okay, so now you have my screen. Now, the first one I want to share with you is uh, the... Sorry, I'm not looking at the other screen now. Turning off the alert, because the thing is that most people uh, are distract. Those that have got alerts going are constantly distracted. Now you go to Tools, um, Options, and it's in Preferences. You've got Email Options, so be tra tracking that, guys. Tools, Options, Preferences here, Email Options and then advanced email options. And if you see this area here in the middle, you've got when new items arrive in my inbox, play a sound, briefly change the mouse cursor, show an envelope, and display a new mail desktop alert. I strongly encourage you to untick all four of those elements there because you simply do not need them, or 99% of you do not need them. If you get rid of those, that's going to make a big difference. Let me now well, show. Just if I can yes. just quick, quickly jump in there. Um, just folks, Please. remember um, you'll get these uh, sent out with the recording, so don't panic too much about uh, following that that path. You'll be able to uh, click it through on the recording. Excellent. Okay. And the other one, while I'm in the tools up area, is just to show you about um, signatures. Now, um, I think it's a mail setup. I have to think about that one. Beg your pardon, mail format. So if you get, and this of course is for Outlook, and I'm sorry about the Mac users. There are alternatives to that, but because I'm not a Mac girl, I, I can't show you those ones. Signatures, let me just talk to you about those for a few moments. Signatures uh, essentially can be a template. For many of you who are corporate people, you'll have your own standardized one that just defaults. However, if you're wanting to do a marketing piece or you're wanting to tell somebody some information, you've got the opportunity for any piece of text that you're constantly writing to um, to be turned into a signature. So the way to do that is through mail format, come down here into signatures, and I'll just, it'll move a little bit more slowly there. The one that I'm just going to show you is my driving directions because I live out in the country. So here's one um, that I now found that when the first time I moved out into the country and I had to suggest, uh, uh, not suggest, um, give directions to people, it was quite um, a slow piece of writing and I realised that that was something that I could continue to, um, to share people with uh, by having it templated. So that's that's that one. Now let's suppose I want to make a new one. I just type in a name for that signature. I'll just call it test, um, go OK, and then you've got the opportunity to write blah, 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 whatever you like, save it, and so on and so forth. Obviously I'll get rid of that one later. So that's where you do that. And then the other quick one, just dragging things into calendar. Let me just... Um, Let's take this one from Daryl Grant. Let me, I'm just going to turn it into a calendar item. And I don't personally use the calendar item, the calendar feature very much because I use a paper-based diary. But here's another key point, guys. There is no one right way as to diaries. But here's something. It's an email. It's come from Daryl. I want to turn that into an item that I'm going to... I'll do it for tomorrow, let's say. I can then save and close. Now, that, uh, do you see that that email is still remaining? Your screen might be just going a little bit slower than mine, but it is still there in my um, unread mail folder, which is where I've, I start, and that's another whole conversation. Um, it is also, I'll just go back into the calendar, and you'll see that it is now over here. So I can now um, have everything that is in that email is dragged in. Um, let me just shift something, here we go. If I click on that, I can see all of that information. So that saves retyping. I can tell you the first, uh, there's been many a time when I've shown that to people and they've gone, oh wow, that's huge because that really makes an enormous amount of difference to my time. Now I'm just going back to the, um, to the slideshow again and that will change in two seconds for you. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about, uh, I, I won't take questions on email at the moment because I think we'll just get sidetracked too much um, given the time, but uh, feel free to send those questions in. What we'll now look to is the three steps to an efficient office. There are three stages to this, folks, and the, f the first one is the layout and equipment. 
The second one is cleaning up the clutter and setting up good systems. And the third one is maintaining the systems. Now, I love talking about this topic because it's amazing the difference that it will make to people once they get it sorted out. In fact, I go so far as to say I think it's the greatest stress reducer in town. I started off at the beginning of the session saying, would you like your top client to walk into your environment right now? I mean, how would you feel? I can tell you I go into so many different places and see chaos and people go, oh no, I can't take you to my office and they take you off to a meeting room or meet you somewhere else. So just a couple of quick things on this one and I'm going to show you some before and after photos because it's, it's really easy to do once you know how. With the layout and equipment, one quick point on that is to say to yourself, where does my desk face? If you have got people coming towards you uh, and, and because you're in an open plan environment, you will find that naturally your eyes will go up when people are walking towards you. Now here's an example of, of a gentleman who had that happening. I was working with the head office of Dimmicks in Sydney some years ago and the, one of the IT guys was seated facing the, the main doors in from the central uh, office area coming into the main administration area. He found that every time somebody came in, that exactly as I described, he was getting distracted by the people coming. What he did was he shifted a big movable bookcase from behind him against the wall, put that where his desk had previously faced towards the traffic flow, so that now the people came through the door and what they saw was the big bookcase, his desk he just shifted uh, 90 degrees. So he was now seeing the backs of people, not their faces, where, as they were walking away from him. He got back an extra hour a day. So that's just one little tip from the layout and equipment. And my book, Getting a Grip on the Paper War, talks about that and I also run webinars on that subject. So the next set point is cleaning up the clutter and setting up good systems. Just one of the things to do there about cleaning up the clutter uh, is um, to, how often do you have a clean up the office day? There's a possibility for you. Maybe when you finish the session you might go off and set up one. So it's it, a really cool thing to do if you're working with other people is to have a a half a day or a day dedicated that everybody's doing the same thing at the same time. Make it fun, have pizza afterwards or do something like that and you will be amazed at the extra sense of freedom that comes from that and also time. Now the maintaining the system, that is more will take too long to explain on that today, but basically it's, make, it's about your decision making process. And let me share you a little phrase that I have that when I share this with people, I get them going, oh my gosh, and then they write furiously. So you might want to be writing this one down. Every piece of paper, information or equipment lying around is a symptom of a decision not made or an action not completed. That, folks, links with that third point that I just gave you about maintaining the systems because if you don't make a decision as to where things are to go and put them away as you're going, that's when things will get left lying around. And if you think to yourself, if we, had, if we were in a training environment and I could speak to you, I know that you would tell me this because every audience always does, is we leave things lying on top of the desk because we don't want to forget them, we want to get to it quickly, um, or we haven't quite made a decision. They're the three major ones. Then the next important piece comes in and it gets put on top as well. And then of course as time progresses more and more stuff arrives and hello, the, thing, the very important item at the bottom of the pile is rather likely to be overlooked. The, the decision making matrix is multiple points to it. As I say, I'm not going to go into it in great depth, but the bottom line is make a decision as to when you're going to act on it and record it in your diary on the day that you need to start that action and then you can put it away in some other place. We sell a wonderful product called a Q file, which is a, like a step file. And what that does, and you'll see that on my website at gettingagrip.com, what, you, what it does is it keeps things upright and put into folders. So we're chunking things and we're putting them slightly out of the way. If you've got things in your immediate space that you're looking at within your eye range, that, folks, is your distraction zone. So look at what you can get off your desk and shift things away and that will also help you. There's so much more. But I just want to show you a couple of pictures to encourage you.
Now this uh, screenshot that's just about to come up for you is Kirsten's office. Kirsten was attending one of my Win the Paper War webinars at, at, um, when this photo was taken. It was her before shot. She lives in Wollongong because, of course, I can, uh, you can do webinars for any, from anywhere and I imagine you folks are uh, attending from all over New Zealand and Australia. So this was Kirsten's office before she started and three sessions later, uh, the after effect is coming up and uh, she says some very nice things about it. <laughs> the, the one simple little technique I just want to share with you is, do you see the, the lovely plant there on the um, left hand side of her desk? There's all sorts of subtle things that will make a difference and just one, one aspect on that plant, she said the desk felt a little sterile and having looked at the previous one you'll understand why I say that, it felt a little sterile to start with but once she put the plant there it made her feel good. And remember my little comment that I made at the beginning, that really we're talking about energy management. So what is it that lifts your energy, that makes you feel good? Because that's the kind of thing that will help make your space feel good as well. So that's, uh, that's the situation there. Now just before we get into the Q&A, and we'll get as many as we can, and Hayden will tell you how to put your hand up to ask questions, is I just want to tell you about a, a really special event that I've got coming up. I just did the first one last week and it was ragingly successful, so we've got some more coming up. I have a whole program called Crack the Time Code Academy, it's a much bigger program, but we are making for you folks here on the webinar today, we're making day one of that a virtually free event for you. So you've got the dates of Auckland and Wellington, Auckland the 18th of June and Wellington the 25th of June, they're Saturdays, uh, 9.30 to 4.30 and normally the price as you see is 7 95 So I really want to honour the fact that you've taken the time to come today and I'd love to have you come along as my guests. So it's, it's almost free, just $39 to confirm the spot because of course we've got to hire venues and things like that. So at gettingagrip.com backslash event you'll have the opportunity to register on that one. And we do have limited spaces and I'm sorry that isn't a sales pitch, that's the truth. <laughs> the other thing quickly is to just show you that is extra help for you is if you like to just go to my website and I'm just bringing a screenshot up there for you, gettingagrip.com and that's where you can register to get the free report that I mentioned earlier and all of the other goodies. So that's the main things I want to share with you from my end and now I'd love to open it up to you folks for questions. So Hayden, do you want to explain to the guys how they put their hand up? Yeah, Robin, if you can just um, put the presenter back to me then I can, I can get into... Um, oh, you can, can absolutely. There we your, go. Your questions, but um, just fire them in um, and and let um, get the right page there. Um, yeah, just just bang them in there. Anything that's come up um, in the conversation um, through listening to Robin that you particularly find a, a real challenge, um, just do just bang a question through, and we'll try to get to them all. Some that have come in just while Robin's been talking, um, an interesting one I guess and from our perspective of uh, people picking up new technology, there's just the number of people that are using smartphones for email and whether you're finding that's a good thing or whether you're finding that's actually really cluttering up your day and, and uh, causing problems with prioritisation and, and always being available to work. Robin, any idea in, in the context you've had? And, in conversations of um, ways to manage through that? That's a really good one actually Hayden. I myself use a smartphone, I've got a Blackberry and there are, th the thing is guys that uh, everything's got its upside and its downside, the dark side and the light side. So the, the wonderful value of the smartphones is that we are able to access things as we're going about our daily business. And for people like myself and many of you on, this, on the call will be the same, you're out of, of the office a lot, you're on the road, you can keep it on top of things so much more easily when you've got it right there. Now just because we can doesn't mean we should. I really encourage you to apply some of the really most basic thinking about this because it's the same stuff as because we've got TV should we have it going all the time, because we can um, do texts 
Should we do them all the time? Because we could have a mobile and we could carry it into a meeting. Should we have it with us going into a meeting? It's using common sense and using a bit of self-discipline. It's having a clarity about how you want your life to be. So really what I'm saying here, Hayden, and folks listening, is to lift go up to a higher level of thinking and say to yourself, how do I want my life to be? The interesting thing is that people, some people think that because they can keep it on top of everything like that all the time, that's going to make them more efficient. Actually, not necessarily. There is a vast amount of research to show that if we try to multitask on, on more than one type of thing that's of reasonable, reasonably equal value, if we try and multitask on those things, nothing is as effective as if we are single focused and also we will take longer to do the work. So the smartphone can save you time and the way it can also smart save time is if you've got good synchronization but I personally don't use the smartphone applications to to do anything more than just very quick responses. Just make sure it's synchronized and you can, for most, most of them you can use folders, so they're great, but know when, bottom line, know when to turn it off. I see a lot of people that are wedded to their phones and so they never get this headspace to be free of work. And that, guys, is eventually going to just um, fragment us so much and runs us the risk of burnout. It gets to the point where we can't sit still. And that's a major problem that's happening in today's world. So uh, there's lots more I could say on that one, Hayden, and whoever asked the question, but um, um, I'm ha happy to take another question now. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks, Robert. Um, hey, listen, just one other way you can raise questions, um, thanks, James, for reminding me, is to uh, raise your hand. Um, and we can actually cut over to you to, to ask the question to the whole audience. Everyone will hear the question and Robin can answer. So if, if you uh, do want to do that, then within the view you've got the option to... Um, where am I? And, uh, I get a different view to you guys, so sorry I can't step you through that from my, my memory, but I'm sure you can see yourselves. You can raise your hand and if you do that, um, then we'll, we'll switch you on and uh, have a bit of fun with that. Uh, another question that came in was specifically around interruptions from Steve. Interruptions and some techniques around avoiding interruptions. A very common theme in the issues that people are suffering is they constantly get interrupted. Any, any idea, Robin, I guess we've covered off the, the email, the new email um, alert, turning that off. Any other tips there? Absolutely, great question. Thanks very much, Steve. The uh, I don't know whether you're in an open plan environment or whether you're working in a um, in a quieter space, but the the one simple solution. Well, it's never simple because there's always multiple facets to it. But basically, can you create? islands of time or blocks of time where you can cut yourself away from interruptions. Now, if you're in an open plan environment, it could be that you use headsets. For example, I do a lot of work with some major insurance companies and some of them are in quite, in fact, a lot of organizations I work with have got open plan environments, even with the most senior people. And the problem is this distraction factor, as you understand. So if you can use a headset or some other signal that will say to people, please do not interrupt me right now. There's a other multiple uh, ways that you can do that. It might be something decorated over the back of your chair. One uh, personnel company that I worked with in Sydney some years ago, they were all women in this particular firm and so when the teddy bear's bum was up that was saying please don't distract me. The, another way to talk about it is to call it a power hour. If we could, ha just think to yourselves everybody, if we could have one hour a day even where we took no distractions and we were able to focus on high level work, how would that feel? Now if you've got a door, you can shut it and you may need to educate the people around you to let the door stay shut. Um, a large school that I worked with was the senior management on, on a very large private school near Auckland. What they started to do, because people were constantly, even with the door shut, knocking and then sometimes still just walking in because they'd been allowed to do it before. So what they started to do was just a simple little um, piece of card with a post-it pad stuck on the card and on it it said, um, please do not, um, 
um, I, I can't remember exactly, but it was something like, I'm not available at the moment, uh, and because it was a, a school people that they were having to re-educate, I think they said, um, do not even knock, something like that. And then they said, I will be available again at, and they put the time that they would be available on the post-it pad. And I think there was something else there that invited people to leave a question or if, whatever they wanted to ask if necessary. But basically they took responsibility for what was on the outside of their door. Another solution that people have is uh, sometimes working from home for the high level things that take concentration or um, going to a cafe. And one other one I'll just mention, my oldest son, I've got two sons in the military, and my oldest son, a lieutenant colonel, is in a very senior position. A couple of years ago, he was down in, at Defence Headquarters in Wellington, and he made a very interesting observation, because in that environment, he was working in an open plan space, and he was working on a very high level uh, program for, for defence. He noticed that when he was doing day-to-day -day work, he could do that at his traditional office desk, but when he wanted to work on high-level thinking and high-level strategy, that was the wrong space. He had to take himself out to Trentham to the training room out there, uh, the, the whole big um, training environment and bigger base at Trentham on the outskirts of Wellington for my non-New Zealand people. And he needed a classroom, whiteboard, flip chart paper, etc. And his phrase was, you might want to write this one down, big space for big thinking. The desk is the space you do your normal stuff in other places, and you'll find your own other places for doing high level thinking. So that might help with that one. Um, uh, Hayden and Steve, hopefully. Interesting. So Adam's um, raised a, a tip, and uh, he's got a couple of mates that wear the you know the noise cancelling headphones, um, but put them on, but don't actually listen to anything. Just cancel everything out around you. That's exactly so that's right. Yes. And one other thing I'll just uh, say on music is is yeah. also to um, make sure that it's music that enables you to focus and concentrate. Like head banging stuff's not going to do it for most of us. <laughs> Um, listen, I guess we're pressing on to time. Maybe just one more question, and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, one in here from who was the question from um, uh, from John was running multiple businesses from the same desk. I guess this comes to prioritisation and managing priorities. But he's just asking any other recommendations apart from segmenting my day, um, how he should approach things. Multiple ta multiple jobs. Um, it certainly in the the, pl the it's the weekly planning probably is really the secret to that one. Actually, uh, getting if you, I encourage you to look at. A, you might have one major task that you really want to work on say on one particular day, if you can have a reasonable chunk of it of time on that one thing, that will give you uh, a, a better outcome than trying to do small parts of it constantly. Another strategy from a friend of mine, Tom Poland, whom some of you possibly know, he suggests uh, having, even if it's only half a day a week, where you don't do the normal stuff, but ideally if you could do a day a week. Now we can't all do that, it might be one day a fortnight or it might be one day a month, but if you can carve out a solid chunk of time to be working on one major project, that's one thing. But I think from what, what your, um, our, what's that, I think it was John, the question was uh, lots of multiple projects going on at a time. I don't think there's any other way around it than just blocking chunks of time to do certain things. And there's one other point on that. Don't block your day too tightly because there's always going to be the normal things that come in. Think about when is your best time of day for doing the highest level things, by the way, John. When, when is your highest energy? For most of us, it'll be first thing in the morning. For some, it'll be later in the morning before lunch. Hardly anyone after lunch early, but there may be another chunk of energy time in the afternoon later on. So getting uh, the high value things done at the highest time. And there's also lots more. Don't forget to register for that free report because there's the daily chunking and the one to five thing. That's talked about more in that free report for you. I think that'll be the best place to go. Thanks, Hayden. All right, that's great. Look, um, there are some other questions here that, that um, we haven't got to, so we'll try and respond to that and ask Robin to uh, come back with something specific to those questions. Um, sorry, folks, that we couldn't get to them. 
Um, now, just in terms of um, executing out of here, as I've said, there'll be a recording that will be sent out to you, I think, either tomorrow or the next day that will come out. Um, there's also an exit interview as you go out of, out of the session today. I'm really keen to have um, the feedback out of that. We've got this lunchbox uh, planned quarterly at this stage, but we really want to um, get the tone and flavour right. Um, so please do give us your feedback on the types of things, not only on today's session, I obviously want to hear um, how you felt about um, today's topic, but also other topics that you want to hear from um, where we can help. So please uh, take the time. Um, there are some reasons why you might want to fill it in, uh, specifically around the subway. Um, again, if you're not certain that you filled out your address and the registration details, I think they were they were optional. Um, just you might want to just repeat um, the address you want that subcard sent to so that we get it to the right place. When you get that, it's a simple process of going into a subway or you can um, activate the card online and you've got $10 credit in there to, to spend on what you will as long as it comes from a subway store. Uh, the other one in terms of filling out the, the um, exit survey is that if you wanted to have a go with some of the products that we've used, we're using GoToWebinar, um, but Citrix has another couple of um, products, Go to Assist, which is around remote IT support or any type of support where um, you can you can pretty much remotely manage someone else's desktop, just like you're seeing our desktop. Um, you can see someone else's and help them through a training issue or, or a productivity issue. Um, and Go to Meeting, which is similar, but one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, next one on the reasons, and there are only three. You can provide us with feedback on, and I just already said that, so yes, please provide us with that feedback. Um, so great, thank you very much everyone for attending um, those subway cards. Some of you will miss out, I apologise, uh, but hopefully most people who attended today will, will get a card shortly and we'll get that sorted out for you. Um, please just get in touch if there's any issues with, with um, activating that. Uh, that is about it. Just to plug in here for Citrix. I, no, sorry, I forgot two things. One is a thank you to Altane who provided the, the subcards and sponsored the lunch. Altane developed the, the smartphone application for Sub Subway um, and it's a really brilliant little thing. If you do use Subway, then um, take advantage of it because once you've got your, your base order in there, reordering is really simple um, and you're two minutes away from picking it up um, at your store, which is great. Um, and the other was two Apple users. The, the recording is uh, not entirely user-friendly for Apple. Um, unfortunately, the, the two religions aren't talking to one another particularly well still, but there is a way you can save a WMV file. You might need to do some research around how to play that. But a big thanks to Citrix today um, and to go to assist the details on the screen there. Please do look into that and uh, some great products from, from Citrix. That pretty much wraps it up. Everyone, thanks for attending. Thanks for the level of interest. Some great feedback and, and audience engagement. Excellent stuff. Thanks also to Robin and to your help, James and Jonathan. Cheers, guys. I'll wrap it up there. Thanks very much, everyone. And don't forget to register for that free event. Thanks, Hayden. Good stuff. Thanks. Bye.